Hello everybody, welcome to EPG Paatshala. I am Zara Chapiwala from Virasate Hind Foundation. Under the paper Art and Architecture of India, today we are going to discuss the Vijayanagar School of Architecture. This video is part 2 and it focuses on Vijayanagar Empire outside of Hampi. Here we will discuss the general features of the Vijayanagar style of architecture while also discussing the features that were outside of Hampi, the art and architecture of the forts and palaces as well. As we have already told in the first part, the creation of Vijayanagar Empire was an unusual alliance between politics and religion. Harihara and Bukharaya, who were the treasury chieftains in Kakatiya kingdom, were converted and sent back to guard the southern reaches of the Tughlaq Empire. They were convinced by Vidyaranya, sage Vidyaranya, to reconvert to Hinduism and that is how the Vijayanagar Empire came into existence. The Vijayanagar Empire was not a single dynasty. There were four dynasties who com comprised the entire rule scale and width of the Vijayanagar Empire. These dynasties are beginning with Sangama, Saluva, Tuluva and the Aravidu dynasties. At its zenith, which was under the Krishna, which was under Krishna Devaraya, it, it the empire extended right from Odisha to deep down in Kerala. The construction that our hallmark of Vijayanagar style of architecture seen in the Hampi are not just the only architectural legacy left by the empire. Even elsewhere in the empire, we can see a lot of beautiful architectural elements left by them, mostly built by their chieftains, the Nayaks who ruled under them. The empire being a very large one was governed at many places by the governors or the chieftains, the Nayaks, especially the Nayaks of Madurai and Tanjar. Though this has been covered in an earlier video, for the sake of revision, we will repeat the main architectural features of the Vijayanagara school of architecture. Sky soaring gopurams at the entrance of the temple known as the Raya gopurams. Construction of temple complexes instead of standalone temples. Most of them having a separate Devi or an Amman shrine. The major temples had long bazaar streets along the main approach road and also a Pushkarni close by. Lord Hanuman, the most favorite subject of sculptures of Hampi because Hampi is believed to be located at the site which was the ancient Kishkinda kingdom of the Vanras. The addition of Kalyan Mandaps, usage of various types of pillars, the double pillars, the composite pillars, the lat turn pillars, the yali pillars, Monolithic stone chains hanging from the ceiling. These fascinating stone chains were all made up of a single stone but still could move freely. The Yali pillars, the, uh, the feature of Yali, uh, ornamented Yali on the pillars where you could see a rider trying to control a rampant Yali which is crushing another creature beneath it. The Pushpapotika, the inverted lotus flower bud shaped pillar brackets, the Pallava and the Chola style Shekhara, the capstone above the Vimana was replaced by the wagon vaulted shaped Shekharas. Initially when the Vijayanagar empire started building, they were following the hybrid style that was uh, followed by the Chalukyan rulers at that time and which was also enhanced upon by the Hoysalas, the Vesra style of temple architecture. But due to their ritualistic needs, they decided to shift to the Dravidian style. The new, we will go through the other constructed 
newly constructed temples, the additions that were made to the temples and the various uh, forts that were constructed by various chiefs of the empire elsewhere than Hampi. Let's begin with the Someshwara temple at Kolar in Karnataka. It was constructed in the 14th century. This is a tall brick and stuck. Stakko Rajagopuram about the Mahadwara adorning the several adorned with several statuettes of dancing apsaras and sculptural decorations. Vijayanagar Empire kings were great patrons of art and architecture. During their era, the Karnatak music was developed as well as various dance, form, dance forms like Bharatanatyam and Kuchipudi also developed a lot. So you can find various postures of dances in various temples. The temple structures consist of large pillared mukamandap, which leads to another closed hall, another mandap, and then to Garbhagriha through the vestibule. There is a statue of Veerabhadra and Ganesha and on the right the Nagas and Kartikeya with six heads. A huge Nandi is seated in front of the sanctum of the Mandapa. Monolithic Nandis were another architectural feature of the Vijayanagar Empire which it had picked up from the earlier Kakatiya dynasty. The Kalyan Mandap has intricately carved sculptures. The base of the surrounding wall of the main shrine is decorated with miniature carvings of sages, apsaras, elephants, lions, children playing, fighting elephants, etc. etc. The temple is enclosed by a cloistered wall that is a prakara. The base of this temple, Adisthana, consists of decorative mouldings with friezes of elephants, dwarfs and lions embellishing the upper moulding. The Vidya Shankar temple at Sringeri, Karnataka, Acharya Vidya, Shank uh, Vidya, Shank uh, Vidya Ranya was responsible for building this kingdom. So a temple was dedicated to him at Sringeri. In, at, in around 1338, it was probably built on an earlier Hoysala site as it combines both the architectural features, that is both Vesara style and the Dravidian style features can be seen in this temple. And this temple is also a fine example of the astronomical expertise of medieval South Indian temple builders, that is the Stapatis. The main temple hall features 12 pillars des designated to 12 zodiac signs in such a manner that the rays of the sun fall on each of them in the order that the months go. That is, the rays would fall first on January, then on February, then on uh, March, according to Gregorian calendar, but here it would be according to the Hindu calendar. On the floor is a large circle marked with converging lines to indicate the directions of the shadows. The windows and the doors along the temple walls are arranged such that the equinox sun rays, the equinox that is the solstice that, form, uh, that comes twice a year, during that time when the sun's ray, rays reach the deity, well the northern, northern and the southern gates enable the sunrise view from the hall during the solstices. It is more or less a triangle with an apsidal east-west ends. In fact, the apsidal shape of the shrine indicates the. it is a, a very uh, typical architectural feature of the Vesara style. On the western side is the Garbhagriha with Vidya Ganapati on one side and Durga on the other side of the entrance. On the other three sides of the Garbhagriha, are shrines dedicated to the Trinity, Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva along with their consorts. The central ceiling is an exquisite piece of workmanship with lotuses and picking parrots in relief. 
the vimana over the garbhagriha rises magnificently with the shekhara mahamandap and the stupi that is the finial the rest of the roof is made up of a sloping channeled slab the most famous of uh, the vijayanagar empire temples outside of hampi is the veerabhadra swami temple at lepakshi which is in hindupur andhra pradesh the temple was built in 1530 by veerupanna and veerana nayaks they who were governors under the vijayanagar king achutraya the main temple has a mukhamandap an antarala and a garbhagriha and is encircled encircled by two enclosures the outermost walled enclosure has three gates the northern being the main entrance the inner east gate is the entry to the assembly hall with a large space in its center this temple is home to a plethora of sculptures and paintings of divine beings saints guardians musicians dancers and the 14 avatars of lord shiva in fact stories from shiva purana are all there on the ceilings of the halls the hall is fully covered with mural paintings depicting not just scenes from puranas but also mahabharata ramayana and live sketches of the patrons of temple including dashavataras the ardhanarishwara and the harihara in fact the mural paintings of lepakshi are considered the finest example of the vijayanagar school of painting that later was developed into the tanjore style of painting as well as the master school of miniatures here you will find that the not just the sculptures even the paintings that are done very beautifully and intricately are inclusive in nature in the way that they are made portrayed in such a way that when you are standing there you feel a part of the entire scene whether it is the girija kalyanam where the lord is ma- marrying girija or whether you are looking at a scene of arjuna's penance or arjuna chasing the boar the textile and the patterns of the textiles are still prevalent in the region the frescoes measure 23 feet by 13 feet in the ardh mandap and the ceiling in the sanctum above the deity has paintings of the builders that is virupanna and virana nayak regally dressed and crowned with the headgear in fact if you notice very uh, the headgears in those times known as the kulavi were very different they were elongated caps within the temple complex in the east there is a separate chamber which shiva and his consort parvati carved on a boulder in another shrine chamber there is an image of lord vishnu there is a huge boulder of granite stone which has carving of the multi hooded serpent providing an umbrella cover over a linga known as the nagalinga the linga is known so because of the hooded serpent on top in fact the lepakshi temple the veerabhadra swami temple is most famously known for this linga and the nandi bull statue that is there beside it the huge monolithic granite nandi adorned with garlands and bells is located 200 meters away from the temple and it faces the nagalinga in the precincts of the temple the chintala venkata ramana swami temple at tadi patri in andhra pradesh this temple is dedicated to vishnu and has a intricately carved gopuram on the east the garud mandap is in the form of a stone chariot very similar to the vitthala temple in hampi Main shrine has a dvitala vimana above it with a round kalasha and a stupi the finial the external walls have 
uh, episodes from Ramayana carved on them along with designs of Kumbha Panjaram. Uh, the typical features like the yali pillars, the composite pillars, the inverted lotus bud brackets, the pushpa potika and double flexured eaves are all incorporated in the temple design. The Bugga Ramalimgeshwara Swami temple again at Tadipatri in Andhra Pradesh is dedicated to Lord Shiva and is located on the banks of river Penna. All the three of its gopurams, especially the Norse gopuram, is intricately carved but not constructed above its base. The temple consists of a humble ardhamandap joining the sanctum via vestibule. The sanctum has a vaulted, vegan vaulted shikara above the vimana, flanked by a richly carved kirti mukha. The kirti mukha, again, being another architectural adornment of the Vijayanagar school of architecture. The exterior wall of this sanctum has pilaster designs. Both these Tadipatri temples had their construction initiated in the last decade of 15th century and were completed in the first few years of the 16th century. The other temples that were built by the Vijayanagar dynasty in their typical architectural style are the Jalakandeshwara temple which is in the Vellore Fort in Tamil Nadu, the Sondara Raja Perumal Temple, Tadi Kumbu, Dindigal District, Tamil Nadu, the Sri Villiputur Andal Temple in Virudhanagar District, Tamil Nadu, Narayanan Temple, Melkote, Mandya District, Karnataka, the Virupaksha Temple, Mula Bagalu, Kor Kolar District, Karnataka, Upper and Lower Narsimha Temples, Ahobilam, Karnul district, Andhra Pradesh, the Kodanda Rama temple, Vontimitta, Kadappa district, Andhra Pradesh. This is not an exhaustive list, just a small list of few other important temples, architecturally important temples. These are few of the temples where the Rayas or the Vijayanagar dynasty kings made additions. Varadraja Perumal Temple in Kanchipuram, Tamil Nadu. Although this temple was built in 10th century, during the Chola period, the Kalyan Mandap here was commissioned by the great Krishna Devaraya. Intricately carved pillars form the exterior of the Mandapa, which has a total of 100 pillars, 96 in stone, 4 in wood. These pillars have the mythological figures or yalis on them and two of them have the goddess and god of love in Hindu mythology that is Rati and Kamdev on a parrot and swan respectively. They are Vahanas. The, var, the entrance of the mandap is in the typical style that is the with a yali with a crocodile head on both the sides, a makara yari. Yali. The carved images again include episodes from the Ramayana, Mahabharata. You also have dance postures of Kathakali, Bharatnatyam, people engaging in daily chores of their life, that is the social life of uh, the people in those times. Vishnu's Dashavatara, Krishna Jambuvanta fight, Emrus or Mithuna couples, Portuguese soldiers carrying guns. Menaka trying to seduce Vishwamitra, Krishna sealing clothes, etc. It was actually during the Vijayanagar Empire period that the Portuguese came to India and they entered into a strategic alliance with the Portuguese where the Vijayanagar Empire received horses from them as tribute. And in return, they allowed the Portuguese to use the ports that fell under their ambit. Also, many trick sculptures are present in the Mandapa. One of such trick sculptures are a figure which has three faces, four hands, four legs, uh, monkey faces with bodies of two monkeys and an elephant when seen from the front, but they appear like a bull from behind. 
monolithic stone chains on all the four corners of the Kalyan Mandap. The next temple is the Ekambaranathar temple in Kanchi, Tamil Nadu. The Ekambaranathar temple has a huge Rajagopuram built by none other than Krishna Devaraya in 16th century. It rises up to 192 feet. Its surrounding huge stone walls were built in the early 16th centuries uh, and uh, the pyramidal tower as you can see here has eight diminishing, diminishing stories in plastered brickwork. The lower part of the Gopuram is of stone and carved with beautiful images of the Dwarapalakas and other deities. The Raja Gopuram or the Raya Gopuram as we call it standing atop, stands atop a base area of around 5720 square feet. Just imagine the scale. Started during the reign of Achutraya, the construction was given up after the king's death and was never resumed. It remains incomplete. The Ranganatha Swami Temple in Sri Rangam, Tamil Nadu. The thousand pillared hall here, made entirely of granite, was constructed during the Vijayanagar period on the site of an old temple. The temple was already existing. The pillars consist of sculptures of wildly rearing horses, bearing riders on their backs and trampling rampant yearlies with their hoofs. The construction of the eastern tower or Rajagopuram of Annamalayar temple in Tiruvannamalai, Tamil Nadu was started by Krishna Devaraya in 1516 and at 217 feet it is highest of all the nine towers present in the temple complex. It has 11 stories with a width of 135 feet by 98 feet at its base. The Gopuram was completed by the general of Tanjaur, Sevappa Nayak, in 1590. The thousand pillared hall is the in the fifth prakara was also built by Krishna Devaraya. Tillai Nataraja Temple at Chidambaram, Tamil Nadu. The northern Gopuram of this temple, the tallest, again the tallest among the nine Gopurams, was built by Krishna Devaraya. At 42.4 meters, its base is constructed out of granite stone, while the upper stories are in brick, brick and plaster with many exquisite sculptures on its superstructure. The additions that the Vijayanagar dynasty kings made to the various forts. Penukunda Fort in Andhra Pradesh was the second capital of the Vijayanagar Empire after Hampi fell. The fort was constructed initially by the Hoysalas but was later occupied by the Vijayanagar Empire. Within the fort, the kings built the Gagan Mahal Palace as the summer palace and harem that is for the queens and curtains. Building faces east and is composed of two stories of arcade chambers and is square on plan. The ground floor has 45 foliated arches in the pavilion similar to the Lodi arches in Delhi. It shows a distinct Islamic influence just like the Lotus Mahal in Hampi. The surface of the walls is coated with stucco. The tired pyramidal roof is similar to the Lotus Mahal in Hampi and it was built in the Indo-Islamic architectural style that was adopted by the Vijayanagar kings and mostly was used for building various structures related to the queens and their baths. The Penukonda fort has a significant structure called the Timarasu Jail. Timarasu Jail is significant because Timarasu was Krishna Devaraya's trusted advisor, the minister on whom he depended completely but later on suspicion of murder of his son was held captive here. 
The small structure, square in plan with narrow openings on four sides, has an octagonal pyramid-shaped roof and a partial terrace runs, runs around the dome. Overhang of the roof is supported by brackets on all the four sides. The Narsimha Swami Temple Situated on a high plinth and approached by a broad stairway, this temple walls as well as pillars are surprisingly plain when compared to other Vijayanagar style temples. The temple complex seems to be mainly constructed for accommodating travellers and pilgrims on their way to Tirupati, almost like a Sarai. Temple's Pushkarni is similar to the one at the uh, Achitraya temple in Hampi with a small pavilion in the middle. Known as the Grand Canyon of India, the Gandhi Fota Court in Andhra Pradesh was constructed in 12th century during the Chalukyan rule. There were many additions made to this fort by the Vijayanagara kings. Mostly ruined, the Ranganatha temple here has its has a pillared mandapa and a small garbhagriha standing without any superstructure. The temple is surrounded by a pillared cloister along the inner side of Praka, the prakara. The Madhavaraya temple is slightly in a better condition. Five stories of its gopuram have survived till date. The interior pillars of these mandap appear lofty, though they lack the elegance of the pillars that are displayed in Hampi. This temple too is surrounded by a pillared cloister, the designs of which are extremely simple without any yali motives. The temple is believed to be built during the reign of Krishna Devaraya. Very surprising. Vellore Fort in Tamil Nadu. Vellore Fort was built by Chenna Reddy and Timma Reddy, who were subordinate chieftains under Sadasivaraya. In 1566, constructed using granite and spread across 133 acres, this fort is surrounded by a deep and wide moat with double fortifications. The temple situated in the fort here is the Jalakandeshwara temple. It was built in the middle of the 16th century by the Nayaka chiefs. This profusely sculpted temple is one of the best example of Vijayanagara style of temple architecture. The Chandragiri Fort in Andhra Pradesh. Chandragiri was the fourth capital of the Vijayanagara kingdom. Although the construction of the fort has been an attributed to Shivappa Nayaka of the Yadava Nayaka dynasty. It was under the Vijayanagara dynasty that the fort saw its glorious days. The Raja Mahal here is a three-storied building with a terrace on top. Its tired pyramidal finial is again architecturally very similar to the Lotus Mahal in Hampi. It has a plain exterior with pointed arches and balcony overhangs supported by brackets repeated in elevation of design. It is constructed with stone, brick, lime and mortar devoid of timber. The floors are supported by massive pillars while the walls bear fine plaster and stucco de decoration. Today it is it has been converted into a museum and houses some of the best bronzes and sculptures of not just the Vijayanagar era but also of other eras and sites of archaeological importance throughout Andhra Pradesh. The Rani Mahal here is a smaller building measuring 92 feet by 16 feet in width with its main entrance in the East. If you look at the roof here, again the same pyramidal uh, roof exists that is that was seen in the Raja Mahal as well as the Lotus Mahal of Hampi. It consists of a ground floor, first floor and a terraced roof. The ground floor of the building consists of pavilions while the upper floor has rooms. 
the exterior features mainly consists of angled profile arches within rectangular frames, pilasters between the arches, a variety of ornamental motifs and designs like arabesques, dipped fruits, foliations, monster masks, medallions, parrots, etc. The Jinji Fort in Tamil Nadu. The Jinji Fort uh, rose into prominence in the 15th and the 16th centuries due to its strategic location in the Tamil country. Jinji Fort consists of three hillocks, the Krishnagiri, Rajagiri and the Chakkali Durg, each with their own citadel as well as a triangular area between them. The fort walls are 13 kilometers long and the three hills are connected by walls enclosing an area of another 11 square kilometers. It has three defensive lines, all with, all with powerful gateways and two with triple arches. The Kalyan Mahal in the Jinji fort is again built in the Indo-Islamic style and is one of the most attractive ruins in the fort, it is a square courtyard surrounded by chambers and has a large central tower of eight stories. It is 27 meters high with a tired pyramidal roof. Other buildings in this complex are granaries, prison cells and a temple dedicated to the presi presiding Hindu goddess called Chenji Amman. The fortification contains a secret pond also known as Anaikula. The Venkatarama temple is the largest temple in the fort and was built in mid 16th century. The carvings on this temple again depict scenes from Ramayana, various incarnations of Vishnu and the legend of Samudra Mantan, the churning of the ocean. The Bangalore fort with the necessary permission of uh, Achutraya, Kempe Gauda won built this mud fort in Bangalore. The Kempe Gauda was a feudatory of the Vijayanagar Empire. He intended the new city to have the fort, cantonment, tanks, temples and people of various professions. He built a red fort with eight gates and a moat surrounding it. Inside the fort, two wide roads ran from north to south and east to west. After the Battle of Talikota in 1565, when all the southern Sultanate kingdoms joined forces to defeat the mighty Vijayanagar Empire, the Nayaks who were ruling earlier as feudatories all declared independence. Under the Tuluva dynasty in the 16th centuries, three strategic tem uh, centers of Tamil country that is the Jinji, Tanjore and Madurai declared independence. They continued ruling and building uh, in the typical architectural uh, tradition of the Vijayanagara empire. Few of the temples that have been built by them are the Meenakshi temple, at Madurai in Tamil Nadu, which was built by the Madurai Nayaks. The Jinji Fort in Jinji, made by, constructed by the Jinji Nayaks. The Tanjore Palace in Tanjore, Tamil Nadu, constructed by the Tanjore Nayaks. The Subramaniam Shrine in uh, Sprihadeshwara Temple Complex by the Tanjore Nayaks. The Nandi Mandapa in the Brihadeshwara Temple Complex again by the Tanjore Nayakas, the Seisharaya Mandapa in the Sri Ranganatha Swami Temple in Sri Rangam, Trichy, again built by the Tanjore Nayaka. Though the empire today does not exist, for very many years and centuries, it was considered the most powerful empire of South India and the legacy that it has left in its paintings, in its bronzes, in its temples, in its buildings are everlasting. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. For more details, please refer to the e-text and the other 
quadrants uploaded on the website. Thank you very much.